Okay, last ho hormones that you are responsible for come from the adrenal medulla, um, which is the inner portion of the adrenal gland here, right here in the middle. Um, and the hormones that come from there are all very chemically similar to one another. And they're all also sometimes released as neurotransmitters. So we will be talking about them again this semester as neurotransmitters. Um, they are epinephrine, usually abbreviated E, um, norepinephrine, quite often abbreviated NE, um, and dopamine. They are all water-soluble amines. This dopamine does not have the same function as the dopamine that comes from the um, hypothalamus. So different, same chemical structure, different location, interacts with different receptors, does different things. Okay, so as far as hormonal release of these, um, you probably have heard of epi um, called adrenaline um, because it comes from the adrenal medulla, okay? Um, we usually refer to it as epinephrine, um, and their its cohort norepinephrine um, does pretty much similar things, but norepinephrine is more commonly released as a neurotransmitter than a hormone, and epi is more commonly released as a hormone than a, nore than a um, neurotransmitter. And the ratio is about four to one of um, epi to norepi as a hormone. Why are these released? These are your stress excitement hormones. They are released as a direct response to the sympathetic nervous system stimulating the adrenal medulla. And then the adrenal medulla dumps um, epi and also norepi, a little dopamine, but we'll concentrate on epi, into the bloodstream. And they do quite a few things. Um, when your sympathetic nervous system increases stimulation, what it generally does via nervous or endocrine function is some pretty dependable things um, with the fight or flight response, like increasing heart rate um, and uh, causing some responses in your nervous system. The fight or flight response basically gets re you ready to fight or flee. And so it has the same sort of impact on cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands as it would if it were released as a neurotransmitter. It's going to, however, when it gets dumped into the bloodstream, it makes the neurotransmitter-like function last longer and go more places because it gets into the bloodstream. Um, so it races through the bloodstream and it pr enhances and prolongs the fight or flight response. But importantly, since it's going more places, um, it can have effects that it wouldn't have if it were just released as a neurotransmitter. Among those, the metabolic effects. So if, for instance, um, a neuron released norepinephrine right at the heart, it wouldn't have any metabolic effects on the body as a whole. But if you dump epi into the bloodstream, it can go lots of places and have metabolic effects. So if you get super duper freaked out, dump epi in the bloodstream, here are some metabolic effects. And primarily what they are to do, they are doing is mobilizing nutrients into the bloodstream because maybe there's a tiger coming at you and it's going to take more than 30 seconds and more than a little glucose to get away from the tiger. So see if it makes sense that when you get super stressed out and it's going to last for a minute, these things might happen. It causes glycogenolysis in the liver dumping the sugar into the bloodstream. It causes lipolysis in the fat, dumping the fatty acids um, in, uh, into the bloodstream. And it also causes glycogenolysis inside skeletal muscle cells, but remember they don't share. So it causes glycogenolysis to skeletal muscle cells and they have more available glucose. And it also increases the rate of cellular respiration in skeletal muscles, because we can probably agree that if a tiger is chasing me, I would like for my skeletal muscles to work as well as they ever have, if not better. Okay, so normal, normal fight, flight or, fight or flight responses, just like you would have if you were releasing norepi as a, as a neurotransmitter, plus metabolic effects. So 
Um, why do you release this and what's the feedback mechanism? Well, stress causes it to be released um, and stress stops it from being released. So, and again, broaden your definition of stress to tigers and bad job interviews and hot dates and all kinds of things. Um, so the chemical class of hormones, uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine are all water-soluble amines. The feedback mechanism is neural because the nervous system started it and the nervous system will stop it. And then you can fill in the columns of hormone released and abbreviation um, on your endocrine table. And that's the last of the endocrine table because this stuff right here doesn't go on your endocrine table. It's in there because either we'll cover it later in the semester or people ask me about it all the time. These are other organs with endocrine function. Although it seems like we learned every damn hormone there is, we didn't. There are more. And some of them will end up being important to us later in the semester, like the heart releases a hormone called atrial natriuretic peptide and the kidney releases erythropoietin. And this is the pregnancy hormone that, the, that you pee on a stick to figure out if you've got any. And then melatonin, some of you guys take that at night um, to cause drowsiness. But again, these you will not be tested on in this set of notes. They're just there for curiosity factor and because you might want to write it in. Later on, you might write it in on your um, endocrine table anyway. Okay, the last part of this set of notes is just categorizing the stuff that we've already done. It's pretty much all um, already done with the exception of the stress response. So I'm going to tell you what your endocrine system will do when you are stressed out, kind of like the 2020 story. Okay.